Hello and welcome back to VFX and Photoshop tutorials. This is going to be a quick little one about uh, just uh, one little uh, trick, a bit of a technique that everyone should know with uh, photo compositing or matte painting. And of course this would apply to other things as well, uh, video and, and effects and, and things like that. But it has to do with uh, matching grain and matching uh, the blur from various images. So you might see right now I've got an image already ready to go. I've um, made a mask on it and the image was turned into a smart object before making the mask. So I've spent some time on that. Just a quick little mask. It's not great, not perfect, but it's, it's uh, good enough for our purposes now. And of course I have other tutorials on how to make a mask the correct way in Photoshop, which is procedural, procedurally. So anyway, take a look at those if you uh, want to know more about it. But I'm going to talk about the compositing part of things here. So here is uh, another image with this image right here just to show you that um, as this photograph was uh, metered here for the building, you'll have the sky being all overexposed and blown out, which is fairly common, but it actually helps us in doing uh, compositing. So if I want to put in a more interesting sky, I'll grab this image here and toss it there and put it behind, and there we go. So you can see already it's a much more interesting sky. Now, the values aren't quite right. So probably what I'd want to do to this is um, crank up the levels a bit and make it just a little bit brighter. One thing when you're doing your compositing and working with uh, skies and then uh, solid um, items like this is remember that your sky is a light source. So it's really going to be always brighter or higher in value than anything down here, unless it's another light source. And that even applies if you're doing something which is a dark or nighttime sky. So, of course, it's because it's a, a photograph, I'm going to turn this into a smart object right away. So right-click and convert to smart object. And I'll do just a really quick um, curves adjustment on it. And maybe click right here. Take that up a bit. And we can see that that's oh, probably a bit too much, but yeah, something like that. And uh, a little bit lower down here. There we go. So I'm taking this um, image here of the sky and just giving it a little bit a little bit more brightness there. You can see how it really fits in better especially with um, the idea of this light wrap around here. So it's looking a little bit better. But to have this really be a good composite image we want to zoom in very tight <clears throat> on this. And when I say that I mean something like 200-300% and what you're looking for is the amount of noise and the amount of blur that is in each image that you're compositing. So here's my initial image here with the building and here's the sky. And as I'm looking at this, what I'm seeing is there is um, a good bit of noise. I can see some noise in this photo. And of course there's noise here, but it's not quite the same. And what you want is for these uh, images here to really match in order for the composite to look good. Another thing you might want to do, and this is really handy in Photoshop these days, is click on the mask and sometimes just give it a tiny bit of feather, you know, less than a pixel or so. And that will soften the edge just a little bit. Often there's a bit of softness in the digital photos. <clears throat> so as I'm looking at these edges here, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at the amount of blur right here. I'm trying to look at the amount of blur right here. And unless I'm dealing with something which is like a depth of field issue where I want in focus and blurry, um, I want to try and match those. So it looks like this one's really crisp and, and in focus. Uh, so I might want to take this image right here. And of course, because it's a smart object, I can do this non-destructively. Add maybe just a tiny bit of Gaussian blur to it. And often just a tiny bit, less than a pixel, is what you're looking for. Now the goal here is not to make it look blurry necessarily. The goal is to make it uh, match the other images in your composite. That's the goal. If it doesn't need to be blurred, it doesn't need to be blurred. So that's the idea is you're trying to make it match. So that's a little bit better. But what I'm really trying to do is try and match this noise. And what's interesting is that Photoshop actually has features to add noise back into your photos. Now you might wonder why is that? Usually we're trying to remove noise. Uh, if I was going to use this for other purposes, I might want to remove this noise and try and make it look better. But we're adding noise back in. 
and especially with visual effects and compositing, when you're compositing in other stuff, especially if it's CG stuff, that's going to have no noise at all. It's going to be too crisp and perfect. And so we're adding noise in to get it to match the original footage. Well, the same thing is happening here. I want to have these layers match in terms of blur and noise. So if uh, I take a look at this, I can see there's some noise. I can even see some color noise here. I don't have quite the same thing here. So I want to add some noise to this layer. If you go to filter and noise, what you'll notice is there is an add noise filter right there. And I use this quite a bit in these instances. Let me show you what that does. So you can see I'm adding noise to this. And as I do that, you know, there's quite a bit. Now the noise by itself looks pretty awful. It looks pretty gross. It's really bad stuff. But I want to show you some of these features here. You've got uniform and you've got Gaussian. And that's just really a little bit of difference of how the pattern works. And, and I'm not sure one's better than the other. You're really just trying to match things. And of course, you can do monochromatic. See how now the noise is just texture. It doesn't add any color. If you turn that off, there is a bit of color. Now I'm seeing a bit of color happening here. So I want to add color noise here. Now the big problem is that it's way too much. If I take and I move it down, you know, I might get it to be a little bit better. But... I also want to soften this noise. Now I've already got a Gaussian blur here, just a little bit. But I'm thinking that if I'm going to Gaussian blur this noise so that it matches right here, it's going to blur this image too much. And again, my goal is not to make this look blurry. So I'm going to undo this noise and get to the, really the point of this little tutorial. And that's a good way to add noise and blur the noise to this image. And that's to put it on a separate layer. So if I make a brand new layer, there's my blank layer on top. And if I go up to my filter, and I'll do noise and add noise. What you'll see is this. I cannot complete the add noise command because the selected area is empty. Now most filters, not all, but most filters in Photoshop require existing pixels to work on. And noise is one of those. It won't work on this. So basically what I need is I need a layer that already has pixels on it to add the noise to it. But I don't want that to cover this up. So let me show you how we'll do that. I'm going to just um, delete this layer. Now, here's my new layer button. If instead of clicking it, I option click it or alt click on a PC, the same thing here. If I go to layer and new layer, same thing right here. What will happen is it will give you this option right here where I can do um, existing blend modes. So if, of course, the normal, the default is right here. If I go down and choose something like, hopefully you know what these mean. These are your darkening blend modes. And in these, if I click one of these, notice how it says fill with multiply neutral color, white. Well, that's not really a good explanation. That's kind of Adobe speak for fill it with a transparent color. And all these darkening blend modes, white is transparent. In the same way with all the brightening blend modes, uh, black is transparent. Now we don't want to really brighten or darken this existing layer. We want to keep it sort of neutral. And then we'll come to the overlay blend modes. And with these, 50% gray is transparent. Now, black, white, and 50% gray have really uh, important um, features and uh, properties in Photoshop and in general with, with compositing. So if I choose overlay, and already has this option here to fill with an overlay neutral color, meaning transparent, I'll click that. And there it says overlay. Um, I can also click right here, which I do now or later, which is use previous layer to create clipping mask. I'm going to do that, and I'll click OK. It's created a brand new layer, and what you see is that layer is filled with 50% gray, except you can't see it because it's in overlay blend mode. If I take it back to normal, now you'd actually see it. What this is showing here is that by using a clipping mask, this uh, layer, the color or the pixels on this layer, uh, it's only going to, to be visible on this area here, where this layer has visible pixels. It's not going to show up here, which is what we want. We're trying to add this noise right here to this part, but not to this part. So I'll undo that. We'll get, take it back to overlay. Of course, this is one of the great um, uses of a, a clipping mask in Photoshop. And you can alter option click right in between those layers to um, uh, set the clipping mask or, or unset it to put it back. So... What I'm doing here is I'm going to put my noise on this layer, and so I'm not messing up this layer. And because this has pixels, even though you can't see them, it's still full of pixels, 
and I can put the noise on there. So I'll go back to my filter and I'll do the noise and I will oh wait before I do that where did I forget I want to make this a smart object because I want to do all my work non-destructively almost forgot so let's right click on that layer and let's do convert to smart object luckily it still stays, stays as overlay and it's all the same thing except now my filtering will be non-destructive and I can go back and fix it if I need to so filter and noise and add noise so I can see it right there and you can see it's on this gray and uh, I'll take the amount up a little bit, kind of like that. That's a bit too much, but we're not going to worry about it. Notice how I'm adding color to the noise, because there's color here. And I'll get that. Do I want Gaussian distribution? That's a little heavier. I think maybe uniform. That's what I do a lot, but just kind of take a look. And usually what's going to happen here is that your noise needs to be softened. And so as I add this noise here, it's a bit too much, but I'm going to worry about that later. So we'll do that right now maybe down just a little bit and we'll say okay great so I've added noise now of course we need to soften it and that'll be with blurring it Gaussian blur is what you want here so I'll go back to my filters go to blur gallery nope actually go to just blur there we go and Gaussian blur and now I'm going to blur this noise in this case probably quite a bit but the whole point is I'm trying to get it to match the noise here I want this noise right here to match the noise here and I'm zoomed in pretty tight I could even go a bit tighter to try and do that and, and the amount of noise you add and the amount of blur you add are really just going to be whatever you can do to match this now, I'm thinking that blur looks a little bit too much so I'll take that down a bit okay and now maybe the noise is a bit too much but of course because this is a smart filter I can go ahead and double click on this add noise right here and reduce that a little bit and I'll see what it looks like there we go so now what I've added is a little bit of color noise here and I've softened it with the blur filter to get it to match and so that's looking pretty good so I want to come over here and look at various other areas and kind of see how it compares here and how it compares here and if the two are look like they're they're matching so if I turn this layer off I can see here it is with no at noise added I turn the layer back on there's the noise added there and so maybe I want just a little bit less noise but again that's the great um, point of using the smart filter on a smart object is that you can go back in and fine-tune it so that it really uh, does just what you just what you need and maybe a little bit less blur as well and often you might have to go back and forth a bit and kind of fine-tune it to kind of get it to match but that's the idea is I'm trying to add noise and blur it to whatever um, layer is probably the cleanest so that it matches the one that is the noisiest because it's easier to add the noise and the blur than it is to take out noise and blur and so now that I've got this happening here it's looking pretty good and the qualities of this image would look um, like they match the qualities of this background image that might not be something that you notice when you zoom out you really notice it when you're very tight in which is why you do that but trust me it'll make your composites look much more uh, accurate and realistic as though the two photos came from the same place and that's just using Gaussian blur and add noise and I'm using the technique of putting it on a separate layer in this case it's overlay because I don't want to really brighten the image or darken the image I want to keep it fairly neutral and that's what overlay is good for so the noise will be a little bit darker and a little bit brighter but won't really darken or brighten the whole thing overall it'll stay about the same value and of course multiply mode of 50% gray and you get that option right here by option clicking on the um, the new noise or the new layer button and choosing the options right here so this is what you're looking for is this fill with overlay neutral color and then turn that into a smart object and do whatever you want here to add the noise here now I'm using this filter which is noise but there are two other ones that are actually quite good for this and I want to show you them uh, just so you can keep those in mind as well if I go to the filter gallery Photoshop is actually some things like this with texture you have grain you see that you've got grain and you can adjust the intensity and contrast and that's for the same type of thing these are in there to try and match the grain from different types of film so that you can composite and get it all to match up uh, there are some other ones as well if I go to um, artistic there is film grain and film grain 
right here gives you um, some nice options. Uh, you can have adjust the size and the highlight area and the intensity. If I go back to grain, notice that with the type, it gives you enlarged, regular, soft. Uh, these can actually be really nice for trying to match certain types of, of film grain. You know, clumped is a really nice one right there. But you can see what it's doing is it's adding uh, something similar to the uh, add noise filter and then softening it. But you have some good controls here. So you've got those three filters. You've got grain, you've got film grain, I'll cancel this, and of course good old um, noise and add noise. So keep that in mind as you're compositing things, there's a reason those filters are in there. And so that's so that you can make all your separate elements that you're combining and compositing in Photoshop, you can make them uh, match and look like they were all taken with the same camera. So the same uh, attributes of that lens are going to be applied to, uh, to all the images. And uh, that's our little tutorial for now. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you'll be back for more.